Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and this week I am making three different recipes from around the world that don't use much flour to help everyone who is at home like me in isolation and can't get more flour but like to bake for stress relief. I've also set up some escape room style puzzles for you to solve and try and unlock some prizes. I'll get onto that later in the video. Let's start with a cake from Sweden called the Princess Cake. Place sugar and eggs into a bowl and beat on high speed until they fluff right up and they're airy and light. Turn off the beaters and then you want to sift in the plain flour and cornstarch and baking powder. Some of these recipes do have some flour in them, as I said, just not large amounts for the size of the end product. For a list of the recipe quantities, click on the link below to go through to howtocookthat.net and I'll type them all out there for you. Use a spatula to fold those ingredients together. Folding is different from stirring. You scoop right down to the bottom and fold it over the top. Once you can't see any more flour, that's it for the cake part. Easy, hey? I split that between two trays lined with baking paper. I think in hindsight you're better off doing one tray and one round tin and you can make that adjustment when you make it and bake them in the oven until they're golden. Now for the custard layer. Put the egg yolks and the vanilla into a pan and add in the sugar and the corn flour. Now if you don't have corn flour, you could swap it in this recipe. If you can't get hold of it, I totally understand and just put in a bit of normal flour instead. Whisk them together until smooth and then add in the cream and mix that in too. And now if you're wondering why I didn't just chuck it all in at once, that's because you tend to get lumps of flour if you add in too much liquid at the start. Place that on the stovetop and mix continuously until it really thickens and keep stirring for a couple of minutes and then set that aside to cool. Take some baking paper and cut slits in the middle of each side and on the diagonal and then push that down into a nice round bowl and then pay attention to where they overlap so that you know where to cut and just draw a line where it's overlapping there and draw a line at the top of the bowl so you know where that is. And that will give you a rough guide as to how you need to cut your cake pieces so that when you put it in, it fits inside the bowl. And you should be able to do that using just one of the trays of cake. With the other tray, I had to cut that into a round and then cut it into two halves. Personally, I think this is way too thin, which is why I said I think that you should bake it in a round cake tin for this one instead of the tray. Spread the top layer with raspberry jam, then whip up your cream and add it into your cake lined bowl. Smooth off the top and then attempt to add that first layer of cake jam side down. Mine is way too thin, so I'm gonna be doing a jigsaw puzzle of cake pieces for this layer. Never mind, it's still gonna taste okay. Now whip up your custard with some extra cream until it's smooth and then spread that over the top. And that's gonna hide the craziness that's underneath there. Then add the final layer of sponge. Now that one was a lot easier to move because it was a little bit thicker. And then put something flat on top and add a bit of weight to that. And you wanna put this in the fridge for an hour or two. Once it's chilled, you can remove the weight, put your plate on top of the bowl, and then carefully, because you don't want to drop the whole thing, flip that over like that. Make sure it is centered on your plate, then give it a little bit of a shake until you see it drop onto the plate, and then remove the bowl. Add a little bit more whipped cream on top and spread it out all over the cake. Now this is just gonna make sure it's totally smooth and we've filled any little gaps and you can just get some acetate or a bit of plastic and run it around. Doing it this way in the bowl and then tipping it out gives you that nice dome shape. I've never seen it done this way before. I just thought this would make it much easier to get that princess cake dome than if you're doing it the right way up and layering up cake and a dome of cream and trying to put cake over the top of it. Typically princess cake is then covered in marzipan, which is a bit like fondant, but it is really, really strong almond flavored. You either love marzipan or you hate it. If you love it, go ahead and cover it in that. If you hate it, you can use fondant flavored however you like, or you could put some grated pieces of chocolate over the top or just pipe more cream all over the top of it. If you are using marzipan or fondant, you wanna lift and lower the edges to eliminate those bunched up areas. 
and then you simply smooth it out and cut off the excess around the bottom and you have this nice smooth dome. Then you can add a couple of pink roses, you can make them out of fondant like I did or use real flowers and then just give a little sprinkle of icing sugar. And there you have a princess cake. This recipe was actually invented and published by a home economics teacher, Jenny Ackerstrom, in 1948. Now she called it green cake in her cookbook. And the reason it's called a princess cake is she happened to teach three princesses of the time in her class, and this was one of their favorite cakes apparently. Next, from Croatia, we have a torta ledini vieta, or icy wind. Put your egg whites and sugar into a bowl and whip it on high speed until they reach stiff peaks like this. Put it into a lined baking tray, spread it out so that you get a nice even layer and place it into a slow oven and bake for one hour. While that's baking, mix together your egg yolks, sugar and that little bit of flour until they're well combined and then add the milk and stir again. Put that into the pan and heat over high heat until it starts to thicken and keep stirring over the heat until it's really thick. Add in the butter and let that melt and then let that cool down to room temperature. Once it is cool, whip it using electric mixers to make it airy and smooth. Cut your meringue into three even strips. You can make this round instead of making it in one tray. It just means you need to bake three separate rounds and because they take an hour to bake, I decided to do the one tray and do strips instead. Place the first layer onto your serving plate and smother that with a layer of your custard. Then add a layer of sliced banana over the top Cover that with whipped cream and spread it out evenly. Don't use too much whipped cream here or it's going to be hard to stack. Then add the next layer of meringue on top, more custard, and then of course another layer of fruit. I'm using strawberries here, but you could use cherries or anything you like really. Add some more cream, another layer of meringue, and spread out the last of your custard on top and add more fruit. I'm using kiwi fruit here for the colour contrast and then of course more cream. Let that rest in the fridge for at least an hour and then slice to serve. Now if you like pavlova then you'll really like this one. It's very similar but with the addition of the custard in there and without the crispy meringue shell. So it depends what bit of the pavlova you like. If you like that sort of soft marshmallowy bit in the middle or if you like the crispy edge. If you like the crispy edge, go with the pav. If you like the soft bit, try this one. At number three, we have Jiggly Japanese Cheesecake. You've no doubt seen videos of these because they're everywhere by now. So it's high time that you and I actually make one so we can see what it tastes like. Put a deep tray of water in the oven to heat up. And then you'll need egg whites, sugar, milk, cream cheese, butter, egg yolks, and a little bit of flour. First of all, what you do is tip the milk and the butter in with the cream cheese and microwave that for about one minute, just enough to soften the cream cheese and melt the butter so you can whisk it all together and get like a smooth mixture. You don't really want it to be hot, you're just warming it up. Add the yolks and whisk that with an electric mixer for about three minutes to make sure it's really smooth and really well mixed together. Sift in the flour and mix on low speed until it's just combined. Now for the only tricky part, whisk together the sugar and the egg whites. Now the reason I say it's tricky is you need to get it to just the right consistency. If you under whip these, it will turn out a little bit more jiggly, but it won't look as nice on the outside. If you over whip it, then it's really hard to fold it in and the texture will be wrong. It needs to be in the middle, some sort of medium peaks. So turn it off regularly and check how it is. See how this is just dripping down? That's not ready. You need to whip it for about 30 seconds more and check it again. That's looking pretty good to me. It's not really stiff but we have got those peaks there. Add a third of those egg whites into the bowl and fold it into the cream cheese mixture until it's nearly all mixed in. Then add another third, fold that in, and then add the rest of it and fold that through, scooping all the way to the bottom and checking you don't have any little streaks of egg white left in it. 
line the base of a baking tin and pour the mixture in. You can line the sides as well if you want to, it's up to you. And then place that into a water bath in the oven and leave it to bake for one hour. Once it's ready, drop it on the counter a couple of times and then run a knife around the edge. Now these are the most jiggly when they're just out of the oven and they're still hot. So if you want to see it jiggly and you want to get that sort of Instagram shot, tip it out straight away and film it straight away because once it cools, it's not as jiggly. I don't know how to describe it. It's a bit more like cake than it is like cheesecake. It's definitely not cheesecake texture or flavor. It's a very subtle flavor. It's almost like a sweet cakey omelette. It's not cake and it's not cheesecake. It's definitely not what I was expecting at all, but it is still quite nice. I wouldn't say it was favorite, but definitely try it so that you can say you've made it and you've tasted it. Okay, now onto the treasure hunt for you guys. For Easter, because we couldn't go out, I made an elaborate Easter egg hunt for my boys. It was a bit like an escape room, but instead of escaping the room, they were solving puzzles to get numbers to unlock the chest that had their eggs locked inside. They had to do things like get the magnet through this maze and then use that magnet on the end of a fishing rod to retrieve a key from outside the window. They had to figure all this out, of course, and then use that key to unlock this case to get the first number of the code and unlock the next clue. There were lots of other clues and puzzles like this one where you had to make a checkmate in one move. If they could figure out how to do that and move the piece, it operated a mechanism underneath the chessboard that released a marble with the next number on it. Now, obviously I can't send you guys magnets, fishing rods and chess boards so that you can do this. So what I thought I'd do is adapt it and add new puzzles, use some of the puzzles that they had that I haven't shown you and add a whole heap of new ones so that you can print it out as a pack and try and figure it all out, solve it, get the numbers you need to unlock a secret hidden page on the website which has prizes there for the first to solve it and the first to find. So I'll put a link to that below the video. Special shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support, particularly at this time. I really appreciate that I can still make videos for you guys to hopefully encourage you and give you something to do while you're stuck at home. And to all my subscribers, why not set up a Zoom call or a Skype call and share the screen, share the video, choose one of the recipes and just pause it and make it in real time together. And then at the end, you can eat it together and see how you've both gone in making it. You can make it a baking competition or purely just for fun and company. Make it a great week and I'll see you all on Friday.